Welcome to the new media show. We're back. Doing the new media show again. People are actually going to listen to this junk. We do it live. We're live right now. We'll just do it live. We're going live. We're going live. We just can't get enough. The new media show. Let's go. Just do it live. We're going live. We're going live. Bada bing, bada boom. The new media show. We do it live. Just do it live. We're going live. We're going live. We're going live. The new media show. I'm like Adam Curry, and you're more like John C. Devore. I think I am Adam Curry, and you're the old curmudgeon. We do it live. We're the new media show again. The new media show. Technology. <laughs> we make it sound so special. So here we are, back with the new media show. And Rob, I got you cranked all the way up. So hopefully, and it was just one notch. So hopefully, <laughs> you're just as loud as me. People have been complaining that you're quieter. Yeah, I don't know if it's just because I'm. I have a quiet personality. If that's that's what it is. Well, you're you're de- <laughs> you're definitely blowing me out now. Hang on. All right. So I just I just turned you down in my ears because I, I, I don't know. It I, was a little loud. <laughs> it was just a little bit loud. <laughs> but uh, yeah, here we are. So uh, you learned something new today about uh, live streaming, didn't you? I did a little <laughs> bit trying to trying to work with uh, YouTube on trying to stream this show on 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 my channel yeah well. so what happens is in Streamyard, you authenticate your account you can mm-hmm. do that with livewire too you can authenticate the account so when you go live instantly youtube goes live i mm-hmm. can do that with restream.io for my account too because i know my credentials now if i had your username and password to your youtube account i could mm-hmm. authenticate your account as well but so what we did is you have to set up a manual stream and I do that anyway as well. So that the YouTube channel isn't there sitting there running for 60 seconds while we're getting going. And right. then, and then when everything's ready to go and everything looks kosher, then I can go live and then I don't have to do a post edit in, in YouTube. So anyway, but yes, uh, we're streaming live. The show is live now as a live show and, <laughs> and it will be available later as a recorded podcast. So, right. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Now that we got that cleared up, right? <laughs> you know, there. You know, there. I, I we did get some action last week, and I didn't pay attention to. Um, sadly, uh, with the boost that came in for the show, we of course we were lit and live as we are today. We're live streaming on a variety of podcast apps right now, audio and video, two different channels of content. And uh, people can watch live in those apps and they can participate in the value for value program by sending us boost. And uh, the first boost that we got um, last week was uh, Matt says, I can't figure out if I'm, if you're, if I prefer telling YouTubers that they don't have a podcast, but a show or say nothing and feel all smug inside. That was 2,112 (laughs) sats. Bob says, thank Todd here. A few geek bucks take care. That was from Bob. Dave Jones says, keep preaching the gospel. He sent us 25,000 sats. Wow. Okay. And then, and so uh, we appreciate that, Brian. And, and Brian says, hey, I appreciate you guys, but I would have loved to hear each of you actually be able to define what you're trying to say and make a point without being interrupted. <laughs> <laughs> I have an opinion on this, but I don't feel like I actually heard either one of you actually share how you actually think about these points in a clear way i think we solved it near the end of the show if you at least after about an hour brian so if you weren't there todd's basis is we don't care where listeners listen and let's educate podcasters that's it that's it (laughs) well i think we had definitely agreed on the last part of that is that the podcasters do need to know the difference um between doing a podcast and maybe as the the momentum is growing out there of calling every other online content distribution <laughs> platform a podcast too so yeah. that's the that's really the crux of the of the question is whether or not as a podcasting industry we're okay with um, the word being used to describe what's being distributed on youtube or spotify or whatever because they're they're already calling it that so they're already telling their audience that it's that it's just are we as an industry, are we willing to accept that uh, in addition to our technical definition of what a podcast is? So and I, I, I say no, question. and I think Rob says yes. 
<laughs> I think I'm open to it. I'm not sure that I, I mean, I've been a purist for most of my life. So, so it's, it's hard for me to kind of change too much on this, but again, it's, it's, it's about, again, we don't care. The listeners can do what they want to do. I don't want to beat a dead horse. Yeah. And they can call it what they want. They can right? call it what they want. But right. uh, if, they we, are. <laughs> if we, if we educate the podcasters, then maybe they'll do a good job in educating their audience. So, yeah, and, and as that happens, these, these proprietary consumption platforms like YouTube and Spotify are, you know, taking hold of that, that word and applying it to what they're doing. And so yeah. that's, that's the pressure that we're seeing. So I hope that clarifies the the core of the issue here. Um, but, it's really not you know, an issue. It's just a ideology. Yeah. yeah, it's, there's nothing really new about this because this has been a topic that's been discussed for years. It's just really, I think when YouTube made that shift to having the ability to convert playlists into what they term as a podcast has kind of muddied the waters on this discussion. And, and just, just so everybody's clear, I, I don't care what you do with your own show. You know, but I'm just pretty passionate in the in the space, and I have strong opinions. So you know, I'm a podcaster. So uh, right, uh, and in right or wrong, video is increasingly becoming an important element of podcasting. To which some is, shows, right? But in the minds of new content creators and many out there, and some of the ones that are advocating out there, um, it, it it appears that video is becoming coming back somewhat. And that's, that's what we were trying to talk. Well, I too, think, I think the key here right. is with that too, is good luck with that. Yeah. It's and not an easy answer. It's, it's right. not easy. And right. if you're just putting a YouTube embed on your website, you're not really, you're doing a show. If you're the creator for a listener, they don't care. Uh, David well, says, you could just, just make the overall argument. And I've made this argument for years myself is that, you know, what we are doing here is a show. It's not really a podcast or it's right. not a YouTube channel. And but, it's not, it's but, just a show. But it right? is distributed as a podcast and it right. is so, available on a YouTube channel. Right. Yeah. So that's a, <laughs> that's a descriptive term to describe right, what right. has been traditionally defined as the distribution approach. To so, it, right? so I do want to uh, thank David. They say, hey, Todd, Rob, thanks for clearing that up. Beauty Bubba <laughs> says, I'm taking notes on authentication jargon. I must work that out. You know, it's, it's just technical stuff that Rob and I go through here doing because we're multicasting. We're streaming to about eight or nine different locations at the yeah, same I did, time. I mean, Todd, Todd, to be honest with you, I don't want to come across as a hypocrite on this. So we're, we're doing all the things. Yeah. It's just and what we, we say we are doing. And is, we have been doing it for more than 10 years. Yeah. Right. So, so this, this is not us. new for us for right. live streaming. So, right. Well, <laughs> and, I've, Back in the early days of podcasting, I worked on the Zoom platform for, for Microsoft, and that was a huge video platform uh, with podcasting. Um, so, you know, I go way back with this, and that's why I, I have passion for it, because I think that there is a place for it to come back in a stronger way to help build better connections with audiences, just like what we've done with this show, I think, to some degree. And Beauty Bevel says, in, uh, says as well, maybe it does help to understand the etymologies. And from my research, there are a few that follow the term podcast. Well, again, it, it, I think in the, in the end here, what, right. we, what we really want is just an education process. I was talking to someone yesterday and they said, well, monetization is much easier on YouTube. And I was like, no. I said, today, at least with my company, if you are a brand new podcaster, if you got one listener, you're not going to make any money. You can turn on monetization immediately. You know, you, you, you can turn that switch on right now. Right. Yeah. So making, it, making money is not difficult. And, you know, and if you depending on, it doesn't matter where you are, creating content you have to have multiple strategies when it comes to being able to you know if you want if monetization is the goal again if that's the goal of the show then you know what we're doing here with this new value for value it's not new but what we're what we're trying to make people understand is that i can monetize in podcast apps today in which you have to have 3,000 viewer hours in a rotating month on YouTube before you can even turn that piece on. Mm -hmm. um, so, 
anyway, so just just know your options out there as content creators. But let's talk. Let's switch to the story of the day. And this is a funny one. This I, I saw this and I, and I scratched my head a little bit. What an absolute fall from grace. Stitcher. I think it was destined to happen. So we can we can dive into the details of that. But um but yeah, go go ahead and keep going and just kind of set it up so we can how, how long has Stitcher been out, Rob? I, I don't ha- I, I was uh, I didn't have time to go back into my archives and see when the first appearance of Stitcher was, but they they initially launched their platform officially um out of kind of like a beta phase in two thousand eight. Okay. So they've been around fourteen years. 15 mm-hmm. years yep. and at the peak and i again i'll have to go back and look at data at peak they had captured globally i want to say four four, four, four and, and a half, half yeah. something like right. that maybe as mm-hmm. high as five which was in all circumstances that was a home run yeah you and know? a little background around me with with stitcher i'll be happy to share here but um I had the choice between going going to work for Microsoft Zune or going to work for Stitcher back in 2007. So which would which should have you picked? Um well, I'm I'm happy I picked going to work for for Microsoft that turned out to be a 7-year career. Oh, okay. Um but but I I would have been working with Noah, the CEO of of, of Stitcher if I would have taken that position and, and you might have cashed out. Well, yeah, but as we've seen o- over the history of that that app uh, it has struggled over the years and it has changed hands many times and yeah. there may be a lot a lot of people are just not familiar with uh, what actually what the trajectory of that app has been over over the years that that app was actually modeled uh to some degree and i talked to Noah about this very early in the days after the platform i was working on back in 2005 called mobilecast so they actually took a lot of the thinking around um, making audio podcasts available on mobile devices from Mobilecast, which was really kind of pioneering this concept of being a platform that converts audio from MP3 into usable formats that can be used on the early dumb phones, which would be pre-smartphones. Right. Um, back in that time frame, uh, because even back in 2008, a lot of you know Razer phones and things like that were were accessing podcasts and and that was about the same time frame that the iphone launched um so that was kind of a transition period but um Stitcher had been architected to deliver more than one type of file format which put them in a position where they had to transcode or re-encode audio files and they took a lot of heat for that because they were ultimately hosting those media files right. and that caused a lot of consternation with content creators as you might imagine so, you know, it's went through multiple owners, lots of right. money, lots of money has been spent. Now the platform, so just my understanding is from the announcement, it's just the website and the app is going away, but the other creator stuff is staying. So yeah. that's kind of Pandora current owners gateway, I guess, into, again, it's going to be interesting to see what happens here because people are worried about how they're going to get on Pandora and just makes you wonder if poor Pandora's pulling back. But, you know, to achieve a four, four and a half percent global market share was significant. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we had a request um, that came in via text this afternoon, and I, I didn't have a, a chance to uh, to pull all the data. As a matter of fact, my, mo- my phone is not sitting here. Um, it, forgive me, who, who sent it? It's, I, I'm, he's going to shoot me. Um, it came from uh what's his name um Darth Vader uh oh yeah <laughs> so people are like what the hell are you guys talking about <laughs> uh what's his name I'm I'm sorry he's shooting Jay me. Soderbergh yes right. Jay oh my God I'm sorry Jay I'm having a, had a senior moment here Jay had asked um you know he knew we were going to talk about this he says where are you know there's all kinds of survey data and where everything stands right now and I, we've made some changes at Blueberry here recently and I don't have access to, so I had to do some like quick work to get some math <laughs> I guess I had to dump stuff into a spreadsheet I didn't have my nice pretty gooey. But mm-hmm. at Blueberry today, Stitcher was at 0.3%. Uh, 
with about um, 0.3, wow. 0.3% with about 2.4 million listens in the month of May. Wow. That's a big fall. Big right. fall. So compared to uh, Apple, specifically Apple Podcasts, is, is at about 58, 58.5%. Spotify for Blueberry is only at like 7%. Mm-hmm. Web browsers, believe it or not, because you would think this because we have a heavy WordPress usage base, is about 7, 7.5% on people that go to actual website and still listen to podcasts. And that's, that's a, we, we always run three to 5% higher than everyone else just because of the makeup of our customers. Uh, mm-hmm. Go- Google podcast is about six and a half overcast 4.7. And you see overcast today is carrying essentially the same type of traffic that Stitcher did before. Right. And then it's podcast attic and pocket cast. Um, Podcast Attic with 3.7, Pocket Cast with 2.6. That's the ones I did the quick, quick math mm-hmm. on. Uh, on the web browser breakup, Chrome gets about 90% of that total traffic uh, with uh, Firefox and Safari and the rest of them getting the, the, the rest of it, at least at Blueberry. So, um, but for us, Spotify is very, very low compared to like Buzz, Buzzsprout or someone else. Um, yeah, and I think that's the key thing to keep in mind as as you see these specific platform distribution kind of breakdowns on this is that it, it, it does vary. It's the same thing that I saw at Lipson. Uh, Li- Lipson has a very high percentage of longtime podcasters on their platform that have been doing podcasts for many, many years. And the distribution of um, on Spotify is significantly less than yeah. apple where where you look at like a newer platform like a bus sprout and the, the platform distribution to spotify is a lot higher percentage so it depends on the content creators yep. that are in that platform dictates a lot of that distribution and you know in in my site my personal site because i have built such a huge web-based mm-hmm. traffic to it my web traffic is is massive my, my personal show gets about uh, around 27% of its audience listens on the website. Wow. That's, it's that's incredibly high. Right. Um, and that, you know, that is way outside the, the norm, but it's just because of how I built my show and because we're driving people to the site and so forth. Right. Yeah. So, Cause you've got a real aggressive kind of Google SEO strategy. Right. 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 But still, yeah. if I look down my personal site, Apple's right up there. Um, Podcast Attic, Overcast, down, uh, Downcast for iOS, Google, and that's kind of kind of my stack. So my, you know, again, my 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 makeup for my show does not fit a, a typical norm, um, which right. you know, I, I'm not I am not on the on the on the curve, <laughs> right. and I even have a high percentage of Linux users too that come to the website. So that you know it's a tech show so you know what would you right. what would you, you know what would you expect you get all the geeks <laughs> yeah um all right so um but go ahead yeah yeah so i, I don't know if you want to dive into a little bit of the history a little bit more of the history of, of of stitcher and kind of what what this means um beyond you know i know that uh, james cridlin did a did a pretty thorough breakdown of this and even even created a special features page um, on his platform that was talking about uh, the kind of looking back at the history of the sometimes, as he says, controversial podcast app in a, a special article. And he links to an article that I wrote um, back in 2015 about uh, business models and podcasting and mentioned um, Stitcher as an example of, of something that was developing in the industry at the time that I was concerned about. And that's the listening apps, um, trying to monetize, right. uh, without including the, the content creators in that business model. Spotify. So, so yeah, there's that there's been pressure in that. And it's, it's something that I raised in the article too, is, is this reality that these listening apps, um, if they don't have any other business model strategies attached to them, uh, tend to to have a difficult time uh, bringing in revenue unless they're a subscription 
platform, which some have chosen to go that route too. Yeah. Now, Rob, this show, iOS is at 56% podcast for iOS. Is it, or Apple podcast, excuse me, 56%. Overcast, 13%. Mm-hmm. Podcast Attic, 12%. Um, and then it's just a, a intermix of stuff. We've, you know, example, our browser share for a new media show is at 2%. So, you know, it, 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 it goes completely the opposite way. So Spotify uh, on the list anywhere? No. Well, let me go look. Let me see how far <laughs> down it is. Uh, Spotify, how far do I have to go? Uh, it's, it is literally um, less than 1%. Um, but again, it's just the top. Really, the top 10 is Apple Podcast, Overcast, Podcast Attic, Downcast for iOS, believe it or not, Cast, Castos. And then the next is, well, Spotify and Stitcher and Alexa and Castbox. Are, they're all, I'd have to pull the spreadsheet to get the actual total download numbers, but it's again less than 1%. And there's a lot of apps in there. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, let me do it by page. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 some apps are less than 1%. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't even break the 1% curve. Um, so, you know, it's, it is what it is. You would think a podcast about podcasting, everyone's going to be using apps. That's exactly what it, you know, it's what it kind of, pawns yeah. out here operating systems uh you know it's kind of funny uh yeah if you're yeah, a podcaster you're probably yeah you know it's not an app well if you're in stitcher right now uh likely what's going to happen is you're probably going to be listed in the the upcoming uh update to the sirius xm app um and then i heard that the the web pages for all those podcasts are going to be available through uh, Pandora. Yeah. So, so it's kind of a blended strategy. And, and I talked to that team back then when they, you know, when Sirius XM acquired Stitcher, I said, so are you guys going to manage having three listening platforms <laughs> um, as far as your, your media company? Cause I, I'm skeptical, you know, back when that happened, I, I was like saying, well, are you guys going to roll these up together? Are you going to shut, Stitcher down eventually and put all the podcasts into some of the other listening platforms because, you know, it takes resources, it takes staff, it takes all sorts of things to keep three listening platforms that compete against each other going. And so just from an efficiency standpoint in a corporate organization or from a revenue standpoint, you kind of want to focus a little bit, right? And not spread your resources so thin across, you know, especially as you've you've seen with Stitcher, a declining market share because the, it just didn't get the investment behind it to keep it, the market share up. Yeah. So, you know, this whole thing was inevitable Rob, for it to happen. Right. It, comments are exploding. I, people uh, t- t- tuned in for round two of the cage match. Uh, <laughs> 51, 50 sats from Dave Jones. I tuned in this week for part two of the cage match. 3,003 <laughs> sats from Mike. YouTube channels are not podcasts. 5150 sats from Dave Jones. He says, here's my basic issue. If suddenly TikTok sucks all of the monetization out of YouTube, well, that's what's happening. All the podcast consultants will start calling TikTok podcasts also. The digital ad sector of podcasting changes the definition of podcasts whenever the money trail leads to some new platform. I remember for a brief moment, Clubhouse was a podcast. So Dave is absolutely right. And another 33, 33 sats again from Mike Dell saying, Mike, YouTube channels are not podcasts. Now we go over to the YouTube forum. It says, Ross says, Facebook is actually the fourth app for listening to podcasts and they don't even have any integration. Again, that's somebody saying some, some stuff that is blowing, blowing smoke. Well, that's the signal uh, research uh, that came out this past week. No one's Actually, I'm going to have uh, Paul Rismondel on the show next week to run that down for us. No, okay. The only time someone watches this podcast on Facebook is when we're live. And everyone's on YouTube today. There is a bunch of people on YouTube 
And on Facebook, uh, hardly any. One. One's watching the live stream today on 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 Facebook. So But it's I, not a podcast on, right, on, I know. on Facebook, Todd, right? Uh, it's yeah, it's just a show. Eileen says, Hey Todd and Rob, what's up everyone? Ross again says, Oh wait. Um Eileen says, I remember with Stitcher was the only podcast app to send Android users. Oh, that's true. Well, and in cars too. Yeah. That's, that's the thing that, that that's what their calling card was in the early days yeah. was that they were the, the app that had the integration in vehicles. Eileen says, I listen on overcast. Why are you using that old legacy app? Eileen, get on, go over to podcastapps.com and get yourself a modern podcast app. Uh, Darren <laughs> says podcast addict user. You're on the right track there. Podcast addicts adopting podcast 2.0 stuff. Uh, I, a uh, beauty bubble says, can you access when precisely things started to go wobbly? For Stitcher? First, it was really that first transaction when they were bought by what was it, Scripps? Yeah. Well, it was really, Stitcher was really kind of a tag along to the real property that was valuable, and that was mid roll. Yeah. So that's actually what, what everybody was buying was mid roll. It just so happened Stitcher was part of, part of it. Ross says again, so should new shows still add their podcast to Stitcher? I'd say no. Well, it's kind of the gateway to Pandora. Well, no. Um, or is it? What they're doing is they're, they're, they have created a submission engine through, um, uh, the, um, the, the Sirius XM platform. So oh, you can go, Sorry. go to the Sirius and submit your podcast there. They've been, actually, I talked to the team, this was probably a year and a half ago that said that they were going to consolidate the submission process um, for, for all new podcasts would go into one submission process and they would get made available to all three of the yes. listening platforms. Yes, the number one podcast listening app in the world. I heard radio, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And then again, global reach less than 1%. So yeah, the right. number one, woohoo, woohoo. Yeah. They're the number one. Yeah. Whatever for maybe for their shows. I thought, I thought Spotify was number one now, Todd. Oh, well for their shows. <laughs> <laughs> um, but who at the end of the day has, has the most <laughs> consumption and downloads? Apple. It's Apple. Right. Well, not well. Everyone says Spotify does because Spotify has a big. No, no. Spotify base. has the most listeners or yeah. the most users or the most. Okay. You know. Yeah. But but they don't have a history of consuming a lot of. Content no one on ever Spotify. from Spotify has ever emailed any of my shows saying I listen to your show on Spotify. Um. I I agree, Todd. <laughs> but oftentimes, what they talk about is apples and oranges. Yeah, right? and we're so not. Spotify the never talks about how many episodes are actually watched. Right. Or. Yeah. or listen to on their platform as a comparison to Apple. Beauty Bevel says, watch out. Todd is wag wagging the finger. So <laughs> that's a, that coming across no, no, Hawaiian. No. Uh, right. I mean, same people who thought they were listening to podcasts on YouTube last year. Now they think they're listening to podcasts on Facebook. So Eileen sounds to be in, in our court. Right. Ross says, I call my podcast. The ones that serve through RSS shows, just the same as I call live streams. It's never just a show. Yeah. So did so does this imply, Todd, that uh, when Facebook decided that they weren't going to support podcasting anymore, that, that that was actually a smart move on their part because now they're the number one platform? <laughs> I, I have yet to actually see. I don't see. I, I'm on. I, I live on Facebook. It's a it's a permanent tab that's opened on my on all my browsers, whether it be my laptop or my iMac or whatever. I and I subscribe to a lot of podcasters. Matter of fact, probably of my friends that I follow on Facebook, probably a half are active podcasters. I've never seen their podcast in my in my. I've seen a promotion for their podcast, right? That leads back to an episode somewhere, but I've never. I, I where is this coming from? Are people thinking reels now or podcasts? You know, I watch reels. I don't consider reels on Facebook to be a podcast. I don't see promotions for podcasts on reels. Well, Todd, uh, tune in next week uh, for the next episode of the New Media Show where all that will be clarified. Oh, well, so. is it going to be round three? Ding, 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 ding. It, it'll, be, it'll be round three, so you don't uh, want to miss it. Okay. It's going well, to be another cage match between 
between YouTube and Facebook. Uh, so. You know, because guess what? It's no matter what we're going to say, we're all fans of the space, right? We're all fans of podcasting. Right. right. It, it is the last bastion of free speech because it remains and has always been an open medium that no one can control and everyone wants to control it. And guess what? And at the same time, give creators nothing. Zero. Zero. Thank right. you very much. Zero. They give you zero. Run always, ads around your content the and give you zero. Right. The creators always get screwed and get zero. You know, creators have a choice on where their content resides. They have a choice. Yeah. Why, you know, it, it, we talked about this last year. Just imagine, just imagine about 50,000 podcasters or 100,000 podcasters said, no, I don't want my content on Spotify. The power right. in that, the power you have, but most don't understand that. We have, you know, the 10,000, 12,000 people that listen to the show that fully get it, mm -hmm. you know, because we, we pound them into submission. <laughs> So I don't know, but the Stitcher thing, going back to Stitcher, yeah, what a, what a, yeah, you know, too many, too many different plot, just too much. They bought too much. And you know, well, it's, I mean, it's, it's just almost like a, like a drama series. I mean, you could create a whole, you know, movie documentary on the history of Stitcher. You I know, mean, Blueberry has it. all of the companies that acquired it and then sold it and then did different things with it. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a remarkable story. You know, Blueberry has a directory and we get a massive amount of traffic to that directory. You know, literally a, a million or more hits a month come into the directory itself. People come in and checking shows out and, you know, it's, but it's spread across again, you know, several million listings. So it's not like yeah. each individual and listings get a lot. Some shows over there on the directory get a lot. I, you know, I just mm -hmm. think, wow, you know, maybe I can be, replace Stitcher, you know, um, you know, maybe there's an opportunity here, but I don't think so. I'm not building an app. So. Yeah. yeah, it's tough to compete in the, um, in the listening side. But at the same point, it goes back to in the end, you know, what do you want for your show? How do you, how do you want your show represented? And, um. And that's up to each individual podcaster. But, you know, I keep saying it. Todd can talk to his blue in the face, but you, you do it. You do you, boo. You know, you, you do how you do, do what you want. Because in the end, it's your show. That's the beauty. Right. I'm not a gatekeeper. Rob's not a gatekeeper. We just, we just try to caution you about the gatekeepers. <laughs> well, we are surrounded by gatekeepers. So, um, back in 2020, EW scripts yeah. um, sold all the podcast assets that it owned. Um, and, and it basically Triton digital went to iHeart while Stitcher and mid roll were acquired by Sirius XM for 325 million is what the speculated purchase amount was. So what did uh, Sirius XM get out of that deal? They right. got, I, I think what they got out of it really was expense of Stitcher and our revenue from mid roll. Right. That's what they got. Right. And, and also you can't factor out their content creation studio that they had. The, I think it was called the Earwolf uh, platform is a kind of a comedy yeah. talk uh, platform that was, that also has a long history in the podcasting space too. But um, yeah, so they paid quite a bit of money for all that. And, um, that's just another example of how these larger, larger media companies kind of had to acquire their way into podcasting, um, versus build it themselves. Yeah. So, uh, Ross says podcast hosting companies have no restrictions on free speech as long as it's legal in the U S I think here's the key with that Ross, we have terms of service. And yeah. if you invoke hate, in other words, or, and basically a, a hate speech is obviously protected, but at the same time, if you invoke hate and say, I'm going to go you know, off someone, you know, and that's reported to us, you, you know, you, you're gone. You're not going to be on Blueberry anymore. You, but there are certain use, you know, certain things that you know, we will, we will cancel account, but you know, be, just cause I cancel their hosting doesn't mean that show can't still exist on their own.com. 
with their own RSS feed and host their own media. So, you know, that's, that's the Delta there. That's, you know, from my perspective, um, you know, there is a lot of companies that are blowing up my inbox. Every, matter of fact, I had one this morning, someone on LinkedIn says, Hey, you know, we see, we see your, we see all your content on your website. We, we want to come in and, uh, tell you, you know, we want to run through all that and tell, tell you which one of those episodes are, 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 are not brand safe. And I said, no, thank you. I'm not interested. I'm not, I'm not busting my section 230 protection by becoming a, you know, someone that is going to scrutinize the content. If someone reports something yet, we obviously investigate and we have a DMCA takedown process for that, but I'm not uh, going to go and be the, be the speech police. Well, it's the path towards content moderation coming into podcasting. And yeah. I think we have to be aware of that, that that's kind of what's happening there. Well, we, and again, like I said last week, we need to start a list of companies that are being known to use content moderation and have that list be publicly known. So podcasters again, know who's doing moderation on content. I don't think hosts are doing that. I think it's, I their, don't believe that, that any hosts are, are, yeah, are I don't think so. but I do think that certain platforms, yeah, I think add um, uh, DAI are, probably, those are doing are, it yeah. on some shows and those shows may not even be aware of it. Yeah. I, I believe that too. Well, they should know. Well, they should. And that's, that's the key takeaway there is that they should know that they're being analyzed and that that data that's coming out of that analysis is being used to decide on scope of campaigns. Yeah. Eileen says, I'm going to pick YouTube over Facebook. Uh, Eileen, I'm picking my website over all of them. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> because when YouTube doesn't like what I say and take my stuff off, it's still it's still it's or it's still available on my website, and I don't have a YouTube embed on my website, so I don't have to worry about that disappearing either. So, so I do wonder, you know, one aspect of Stitcher that was um, well known uh, back in its heyday was its work in getting integrated into cars, right? Right. Um, I just wonder what's going to happen to that part of it. Cause I saw that early as a big value prop for Stitcher, uh, was getting integration into the cars. And I just, I think what's happening now is, is, you know, we're seeing, uh, the Android, uh, platform and Apple's platform CarPlay and things like that get integrated into vehicles more now. So those big platforms are, are are really being the funnel for what Stitcher was trying to do early on. Um, and so there may, it just may not be a place for Stitcher anymore in the car. I had to go run an errand this, this afternoon. And on the way into the office this morning, which my commute's only 10 minutes, I had, I'm using Fountain, uh, the app, and it's, it works on Apple Car or Apple CarPlay. So okay, yeah. basically, you know, I'm listening to Fountain and I'm able to control it on the dashboard. Um, I don't even use the Apple Podcast app in my car. I use my, 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 my third party app or my modern podcast app. And uh, through your phone? Through my phone. You right. know, so I just, it's through my phone. I don't, I don't ever use any of the, you know, it's all through your th phone for Apple CarPlay. And the same thing, I've got an Android device too. And sometimes it syncs it instead and it goes to the Android Play and it's the same deal. So I think most of us that are in vehicles doing any type of commute, I just, I have to look at that sometime and see if we can see how much listening is actually happening on Apple CarPlay. But again, I think it's through the Apple Podcast app. So maybe it doesn't even show up as CarPlay. Mm -hmm. All right. But again, and, I use Fountain, so through Fountain. Right. And if you look back in the the history of Stitcher, they were their original name was Stitcher Radio. Um, right. Many people don't know that or remember that, but um, the whole concept of Stitcher when it was formed was basically creating more of a lean back experience, more of like a playlist type of a listening experience. And what they what they faced criticism for was basically inserting audio ads in between episodes of of a playlist of podcasts so let's say you subscribe to five different podcasts and they would basically auto assemble those episodes into a playlist that would automatically be updated 
and you just click play and it would play your playlist and then they would automatically insert ads in between right. the episodes. And there was no revenue share in the early days of that with content creators. And since the content was being rehosted, encoded, re-encoded, and then they were running ads against uh, around the content, not in the content, but around the content, they felt like they could monetize this app. And that's, that's where they faced a lot of friction. And that's where the article that I wrote really was addressing that um, methodology and, and how a lot of these listening apps were struggling to justify the investment in the existence well, of the app well, and you look pay at, developers and things like that because there was no revenue model. Were, were you working at Podcast One at that time when you wrote that? Uh, yes. Okay, I so I know. Podcast one. I know. Uh, no, no, no. No, I was working for uh, Spreaker. So I know the late Norm Pattis. I, well, I used to work for Norm. I right. know, but the late Norm Pattis yeah. had a huge issue with Stitcher. Uh, yeah, he did. And, and he didn't well, want content. Actually, Norm, Norm wanted to buy Stitcher, actually. I don't I, know if that's ever I, been said well, publicly. I guess, but I guess you're not under NDA anymore. No, I'm not. <laughs> he's, he's left Earth, so. Well, um, some entity of the Kent company is still there. So, yeah, anyway, but I, I know what you're saying. Yeah. So he, he was a big big no 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 and he's also as big on not going to spotify when spotify was not doing pass through well when, when they were doing caching yeah it know. was the whole rehosting was the issue yeah. and in many of the larger larger media companies objected to that back in those days um so you know you can't really beat up on it too much because um that was a lot of the the revenue models um and we're seeing some pressure around that um coming back again there's always an interest you know we've heard this with youtube and things like that um and spotify like you said they started out caching too so right yeah i i wish i could talk about a certain topic but i can't you can't i can't you know i i think this caching issue um you know, if, and that's part of the problem with the YouTube piece is they're cashing the media too. So, um, well, they've been doing that for years. I so know, it, but I, I just it's don't, not a new thing. But I'm talking right. about YouTube is cashing the, well, yeah, of course. But I think that's going to be a big detriment to wide adoption by people submitting RSS feeds over there when they get that done. Um, I just don't, you know, I think the big shows are going to be very, very hesitant to do so unless you know unless of course big shows are probably gonna get some deal and then again the the small shows are just you know tough luck charlie you're you know you send me a uh ad free version of your show and and suck it up and and, and we we will monetize on top of you and uh and give you nothing so i think where they're going to want is um episodes that don't have dynamically inserted content uh, I think is what, but it's, it's, that's, but, but Rob, that it's, it, it, okay, right. you know, it's a, I can dynamically insert a host endorse just as easy. I can dynamic no, I you Geico can. ad, sure. you know, so sure. it's, you know, it's one half dozen. Yeah, other. But even if you look at uh, YouTube more broadly, they're okay with host read ads. Yeah, of course, but you have to, but the problem it. is there's no replacing it. Right, right, right. That's, that's why businesses like doing collaborations because that collaboration's always in there. Yeah, that's why well, you see, you know, AG1 or whatever that athletic greens, you know, it's about, I, I, I see that green stuff and I'll hear, I'll probably never, obviously I'm going to say this and I'll never get athletic greens ad. I, that stuff, have you ever tasted it? No, I haven't. I, I don't but know. But I also, I, <clears throat> to me, it's. <laughs> sure. Wow. It's healthy for you. If it's, if it doesn't. They're taste, never going to advertise on this show. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but Nor i see a lot of, oh point. it tastes right. good it's wonderful it's healthy for you yeah okay <laughs> so it's going to get flagged in the content <laughs> moderation so i don't know if that's a category in the content moderation uh algorithm oh i'm to sure de uh, disdain <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's on youtube it's the same advertisers all over the place people you know shilling for 
you know, the same, the same companies again and again, they must be having good, good success with it. Yeah. So. Well, it probably works that, for some That people. and VPNs, right. every VPN on the planet is advertising on YouTube. So. Yeah. People will take, <laughs> take the revenue, right? You got absolutely right. Hey, oh, that reminds me. Um, I did listen to it. I'm not going to say the show because it's going to get a reaction. Um, I, and I listen to a lot of podcasts. I very rarely listen to the top podcasts. Right. And I grabbed one that let's say is in the top 25 just cause I want, I hadn't heard it before. I wanted to hear, listen to the format. It was, I could only stand it for about 30 minutes. And here's the reason why two pre-rolls and every four and a half to five minutes, two ads. And I, I listened, I think to seven total ads which i started hitting the 30 second advance button on because the transitions were horrible there there was at least seven ads in the first 30 minutes of content making up and i started counting it i didn't want because it was some of them were 30 second reads some of them were one minute reads and host reads kinda and i was like 15 minutes of content and maybe 10 minutes of ads. I, I'll never listen to that show ever again. I will never, I'll never, ever listen. So I, I, I was blown away at the ad load in this particular show. There's got to be people that, how this show stays in the top 25 is beyond me. Who would listen so, with that many ad insertions? So Todd, how many ads in an hour audio program do you think is acceptable? 30 second ads, let's say. Three. Three in the whole episode. Uh yeah. pre-roll, post-roll. Uh and, three and mids. I don't three no one listens. You know, you can have a I would say three mids would be uh, well, I'm just telling you what my show does. If I do an hour and if I do two, I'm good. Three is pushing it. But I I I, I couldn't I, I got so pissed off. I was like, I'm not listening to this ever again. So are you doing a, a, a blend of um, programmatic as well as host reads in your show? Is that what you I do? One, doing? one pre and one mid for my personal show. Okay. Programmatic for the pre and then go daddy for the host read. Okay. And it's a host read. It's not, it, it lives. It's going to be in the media yeah. forever. And don't you usually do like a minute and a half on that or something like that? Yeah, too? I, I so do a minute, minute and a half. Read. Yeah, yeah. Right. But, you know, sometimes I do short, sometimes I do a little longer. Depends. I try, to, I try to get, you know, I try to get in and out in about a minute. But yeah. it was, I, I, and it was all stuff that I would, how should I say it? Okay. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, VPNs. Some food program, AG1, you know, it was all the thing. And I just like, really? And there's no emotion, no emotion by the host. It's just this kind of read the script. Now here, you should try this because this and use this as such and code slash such and such, this and that. And make sure you get your, you get a, you know, 90 day trial instead of a three a 30 day trial by still using such and such code, such and such. And I just like, there were so many that I was like, Shoot me in the head <laughs> because it interrupted the content. And I was like, what was, what was the individual talking about before the ad start? Cause it got so, cause again, every three and a half, four, four and a half, five minutes, bam, another ad. Todd, do you remember the uh, early episodes of Kevin Smith's Smodcast uh, network? Did you ever listen to any of that? I don't think so. Okay. Well, he had, he probably had like seven, eight minutes of promos and ads at the beginning of every episode that he, you know, that he God did. bless him. Yeah. He got paid because I'd have been going one hit 30 <laughs> second, 30 second, 30 second. I'd, I'd have bit that thing about 10 times. Well, that's what, that's what he would get on the show and, and, and say at the end of that eight, eight minute run, he, he'd say, you know, I know I've got a lot of 
uh, promos at the beginning of the show. If you just don't want to listen to him, just hit the fast forward button. Oh you my know. God. He said, he said that, huh? Yeah. He actually would say that right, right at the beginning of a show. So the next time somebody would listen to a show, they, they would skip. He'd get paid for all of them. Probably performance that was junk. Right. So he was playing a game with the audience, right? So he was telling the advertisers, you know, I'm going to have you at the very beginning of the show telling all these promos, and <laughs> promo swaps and these comedy shows and all this stuff that he was promoting at the beginning of the show. And then he tells the audience to just next episode. So, through them all. so as a podcaster, because we're talking to podcasters, right. go and I don't know how many top shows you listen to. I don't know. Right. I don't know how many you listen to. I rarely listen to any of them. I'm down in the weeds. Yeah, I'm down in the, you know, the 200, 300 level area, you know, and go and just grab yourself five top shows, grab a couple of political ones and then listen. I know maybe it won't be able to stomach it, but listen to how many ads. And I think you're going to agree with me. It, it's too much. I, I just don't understand. I don't understand how loyal. Uh, I would not be loyal. And Todd. The second question is where are those podcasts hosted? That that's the second question on that. Um, are they a platform that's associated with a radio network by chance, or that'll give you a good clue? No, actually not. This one wasn't. No, no, this one wasn't. Huh? Uh. Uh-uh. But if I said the name, it, first of all, I was just checking show out. <laughs> Because I wanted to hear, you know, I heard about this podcaster, how, how great the show was. I just, and I know someone said earlier, they, they don't like listen to us at, at one speed because it sounds too slow. Well, I'll have to speak faster and then you won't be able to do that. Yeah. So. Come on now. Don't, don't listen at <laughs> one and a half. You, you, you miss the nuances of the show with those dramatic <laughs> pauses. <laughs> yeah. And you, yeah, here's, here's another thing I found out that. If you listen at one and a half, th- there's something psychologically negative that happens to you. Try. I would think your comp- comprehension drops. Well, there's other things that happen. So I'm just cautioning you. Go back to one to one point oh. On all the shows you listen to, do it for a week. Do it for seven days, or ten. Tell me if your anxiety goes down. Oh, yeah, that's an interesting point. I, I don't think it's healthy to listen at one and a half speed or two. Really don't. I don't think it's healthy at all. Well, it's not a normal way that people speak. That's the thing. You know, your brain has been developed to listen to speech in a certain way. That's unnatural. So that's, that's just my opinion. And I just, you know, just try it for 10 days and see how you do. You're going to be anxious. It's going to be painful. Those first few right. episodes you listen at 1.0. Right. But yeah, I've, heard, I've heard other people talk about this, this, uh, this issue that they've had and where they've switched off of being going from one and a half to one. So Todd, you want to talk about a couple other? Sure things that popped up in the space. Yeah. Um, there's a new CEO at Lipson. Oh, yeah. on John Gibbons. So why are they doing switching hats so often over there? Well, I can only speculate on this, but, uh, John was, uh, hired probably about a, I don't know, about a year and a half ago, um, as the president and uh, chief product officer for, for Lipson. He's a terrific guy. He's a former CEO of pocket cast. So he's got a long history. He's, He's been CEO of, of uh, or CIO or whatever of a variety of co- companies in the past. So he's a very experienced CEO and tech leader. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not entirely surprising to some degree that he would be picked for that potential role. Um, I'm I'm assuming that the Brad, the former uh, CEO, um, chose to move on and maybe take on you know some new projects. It's not unusual for. Is, you know, did Brad like stay that. with the company or is he doing something else? Who's this? Did, did, Bra- oh, did Brad stay with I would imagine he's staying on the board probably. Oh, okay. I met Brad but, too. Brad's a nice guy. I, like but I don't know. Right. Oh, you've never met that, Brad or? Who, me? Yeah. You knew no, Brad. No, no, I've worked a lot with oh, Brad okay. over the years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, over the time that. So uh, the, new, with, the new guy, yeah, the new CEO, 
Right. You had yeah, some, I've worked with John too. With John right. a lot. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good I guy. I, think I, he'll be I don't a good... know if I've met John. Maybe. It's possible. I, I'm horrible with names. I need someone to follow me around and tap me on the shoulder and say, hey, that's that's so and so. You know, I'd go to parties, you know, I, I, I need a name I need a name tag on you, you know. Because sometimes <laughs> people come to me and say, Hey Todd, and I'm like, uh, hey, how you doing? How's how's how you been? And, you know, I'm kind of looking at their conference badge, trying to figure out who they are. So, yeah. so I think that the uh, Lipson is in good hands with John. So I think it'll work out okay. And then maybe um, Brad can move on and work on a different project. I know Brad owns a lot of stock in in Lipson. I mean, he he kind of came into this role as an activist investor of sorts, is what I would say. I mean, he, he was. He bought in a significant share well, of the company. He, there's and nothing he can to, do with that stock. <laughs> not currently, but I'm sure that they have a plan to bring it back into the public market at some point. You know, who knows when, but yeah. I, that is likely the outcome. But this probably isn't the best time to be taking a company back out uh, into the public market. So it may be good to just hold for a little while until the economy turns around. Eileen says they use Libsyn as a resume builder. <laughs> well you know that's okay too yeah well i got i got some benefit over the years from formerly working at microsoft so i can i can definitely see that um, so it's always good to have a rich cv my cv is yeah. pretty thin it, well that's because you only worked at one company over the years right well i worked, um, worked for the government and then worked and built my own thing right right <laughs> And, you know, I think now as you look look at it, I mean, I think a lot of people that build their own companies now are highly respected people. So I think it's, I think it's a good thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm just. Yeah, did you also ass. see, yeah, <laughs> did you also see the quotes from Matt Cutler, um, the, the former kind of head of content over at Spotify. Um, he's the former head of Paracast. Um, and I guess he did an, did an interview talking about Spotify and he suggested in this interview that it, it's a mistake. It's a mistake on the part of Spotify to go after Hollywood talent. You know, the Rob and Todd consulting firm could have saved Spotify $800 million. Well, cause I experienced this myself. I know. Uh, I know. Podcast one. Um, That's what I'm saying. We could have, we could have, we yeah. could have, you know, I, t I told the Spotify team when they bought Anchor, I said, you know, I could have saved you, uh, you know, a hundred million dollars just for a little, you know, one hour consult, you know, because they obviously think they know best. Can't monetize also, the network. Yeah. And he also said that, uh, he also discussed the slowness of decisions at the company, uh, and, and shows that are resourceful rather than entertaining are what's next. I think that was a very interesting quote that I don't know if we want to try and dissect, but when he says resource looking forward shows that are resourceful rather than entertaining yeah, shows that give, are what's inf next. give information, have, you know, educate, you know, we, we have enough entertainment already. I don't need, you know, and a certain, there's a certain, I don't watch. Do you watch, inter, do you listen to entertainment shows? No. I mean, either. That's, right? that's cause they're low value, low mentally challenging. Even, programs. even if Harry and Megan had created a podcast, I'd have never listened to it. Cause I don't care. Well, but, it's all gossip and, and, and activist stuff. And, you know, I, I don't, yeah. I, I have no, right. I, have, I don't care. Yeah. Well, and, Lots of people just don't care about the whole, you know, English. Well, some people, some people love either. and follow celebrities. I understand it. Right. I understand why people create podcasts after television series. It's not necessarily the actors. It's the series. You know, you look at Yellowstone. I love Yellowstone. I'm sad Yellowstone's going away. You know, it's one of the favorite series after Lost that I've watched every episode. Right. Right. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a country boy. I don't, I don't rope cattle, but you know, it's kind of this cool thing, right? This cool show, a lot of drama, you know, big bullies and that kind of stuff. They're beating up people and, you know, gunfights. Hey, hey, modern stuff. That's fun. But that's entertainment 
but I would never create a podcast about it. Some people do, and I'm sure those podcasts have been very successful. But I don't yeah. want I don't want to listen to Carly B, and I don't want to listen to, you know, I, I have no desire. I want to be educated. So I think it's interesting that Spotify has chosen to kind of pull back a little bit on the on the celebrity podcast because they are expensive. They don't always work. Um, and you know, they've had a lot of failed deals, uh, that have come through. So it's not surprising that maybe they're going to follow Matt's advice. Rob, here's what it is. They under major, major scrutiny. The free money is gone. Mm -hmm. They, they have to have success. They have to have shows that deliver major numbers. Because I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. I, I tell you already what's going to happen. Here's the crystal ball. And if it isn't happening already, every podcast on that platform is going to get a pre-roll played against it. Right. Spotify is yeah. going to run ads against podcasters' content. And then podcasters are going to cry. How come I'm not going to get no money? Well, they have to put dollars in the bank. And the only way they can do it is through subs, people that pay for their Spotify subscription mm -hmm. and the ads that come into the system. Those are the, and maybe they're going to, you know, whatever else they're branching off to movies, books, whatever. They're going to have some you know, small, small numbers on their revenue line. You know, it's a little blip. It's this much, you know, one and a half percent of revenue based upon whatever. And at the same time, they've got a history of not taking care of artists anyway in my opinion. So they have to figure out a strategy that's going to, you know, recoup some of this billion dollars that they've lost. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, Beauty Bubble says, let's do it. That consulting firm sounds good. Good to me. Now, there's a whole bunch of people there in a podcasting space that would be great consultants. You yeah. know, that could, because they've been in this space a long time. They say, yeah, that might not work. <laughs> well, it's been well, tried three times keeps, well the space keeps evolving and changing and what um, people are interested in shows and how to go to market with them is constantly changing too yeah. and that's why a lot of consultants are don't always know what they're talking about because you know they're not keeping up with the market <laughs> my deck team did have a there was actually an explanation mark in the chat channel a couple of weeks well, about a week ago one of the they actually got a consultant on the phone that knew what he was talking about and I say, get, get that individual's name. Make sure we know who that person is. So when someone needs a consultant, we can refer them to them because <laughs> they, actually knew. they didn't have to be educated. <laughs> right. Uh, so Todd, did you see the, the, the news that Australia leads the world when it comes to podcast listening? Do you know I, that? Well, that would be cool. It says, so according to Edison research, it says. The, what's the percentage? It, the Australian study showed that um, forty-three percent of Australians listen to a podcast every month. So, don't eat me, James Cridland. Why is that? Compared to forty-two percent, so it's not a hit by much. No, but, but still, what, what do they say? What's driving that? I don't know. I think it's probably just a culture difference. Um, I don't think that commercial radio is as big there, but. Um, well, so, commercial radio has been, has driven most of their conferences, right? Right. Right. It says, it says 43% of Australians listen to a podcast every month compared to the U.S. 42, a third every week compared to, I'm not following. Yeah, you know, I, I'm a pretty big social yeah. bunny. I, I'm out and about and talking with people and I talk about, you know, they ask me what I do and I, you know, I explain what I do and. Of course, I say I work in the podcasting space and they say, oh, what's your podcast about? And so I have to explain, you know, I, yes, I do a podcast, but I also run a hosting company and they don't understand that, but they understand podcasts. I don't, I haven't run into anyone that doesn't listen to podcasts in a very, very long time on all age levels. Yeah. I, so for me, I think the penetration in the United States is much, much higher than you know, again, again, I'm, I've got the full exposure on age ranges, my age group all the way down. So I don't know. Yeah. When's the last time you had someone tell you, Rob, that they didn't listen to a podcast when you met them? 
I don't know. I, I can't. I always of, ask what show they anytime. listen to. Well, I can't think of anybody right now that has said that, but, but the study also um, asked um, what platform they use to listen to podcasts too. And the Edison research out of Australia is coming up. Spotify is number one with 34%. Now it says used more often. It's not talking about downloads. It's not talking right, about right, any other right, metric right, right. than how many, how many times they used it. Um, the number one is Spotify at 34%. YouTube is number two at 24%. And Apple Podcasts is three at 11%. It says Apple Podcasts isn't on Android. And the research uh, says Android has 50, 51.6% share of mobile um, mobile devices in Australia. Well, I'm going to be honest. If you know, Once you leave the uh, confines of Canada, the United States, and probably UK, the number of people carrying iPhones diminished greatly. Uh, in Japan, you know, again, we have to look country by country on makeup of, of devices, but Spotify for sure, um, based upon just that trip out to Riyadh, it's very obvious to me that, um, you know, Spotify has a scorched earth p policy in those countries. I have no doubt that they're doing well outside in those other markets. I have, I have no doubt whatsoever. Yeah, so it, it, if you look at this just on the, on the surface, if 51.6% of the devices are Android, that does mean that there's like 40, what, 8% that are um, iOS, right? So it's a pretty big percentage sure. that are still um, on, on the Apple platform. But what the difference is probably with Spotify is that Spotify is on the Apple and Android platforms versus apple only available right, on right on the apple platform right and which just, is another example of why apple it would make sense for them to put out an android app but it's also rob if you know going back to what we've done at blueberry for many many years you know we've talked about it a hundred times on the show and we adopted that subscribe on android.com and integrated with those a lot of third-party podcast apps including a new one just recently yeah. um we trained, we had our content creators trained to get people onto Android. So we've always led in Android adoption. And then that's probably narrowing a little bit now, but it's just because we made it easy for Android users to get subscribed to shows. So, yeah. um, and Stitcher's made it easy. I mean, not Stitcher, Spotify's made it easy to listen to shows uh, yeah. on on outside on android so yeah it's no doubt it's 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 google's fault you know for their poor their poor implementation everything they've done with podcasts on android so far this is the thing that we, i keep going back to google has a horrible track record when it comes to podcasts <laughs> horrible and yeah. i'm not convinced this youtube strategy is going to work um you know, they get the benefit of the doubt because they're YouTube. But no one's talking about YouTube music. Well, if this means that YouTube gets gets uh, more video content, then they're happy, right? Yeah, I'd like to, I'd, I'd love to see the, the, the deltas between those that are doing video on YouTube and those that are doing audio on YouTube and what, how many if people are doing audio on YouTube, are they happy with their numbers? Just doing audio only. Is it being discovered? By the way, I do have to ask you, what did you think of our album art from last week? Did you see it? No, I haven't. What's oh, my up? God. You missed. You didn't look at our album art. On not the series art, but did, on the website. Did you see the episode art from last week? No, I haven't seen it. Oh, Rob. Look, did, look, got to load newmediashow.com. That, right. that was created with Midjourney. And it's basically two dudes Screaming yelling into microphones. <laughs> and we got some compliments. I had people talking wow. at different shows about that. Wow. I think we found our, uh, our new uh, out show cover art. Well, right? that's for one episode. I'm going to create something today different based upon everything we've talked about. It'll probably be something to do with 
stitching or something like that, unzipping a zipper or something, because we've talked a lot oh, about stitching. Okay. Right. So, you know, maybe a, a zipper with the infernal of hell behind it or something like that. So <laughs> what kind of a query did you put into um, this this app to generate this? I basically said two men yelling into microphones, facing off each other like they were going to do battle. <laughs> basically, that was kind of the query. <laughs> kind of a little bit like a wrestling match right it, it, that's the I analogy had two or, i, I had two or three things that i tried beforehand arm, and was horrible arm, arm wrestling is what it should have been but I, I i think this thing knocked it out of the ballpark i was like yeah right. that was a great right. it was great now have yeah. you have you seen what i did to the youtube channel oh so you, you you're, you're slipping let me let me I, no i didn't know that you posted all this well, stuff, so yeah, you know let me, go look. let me let me show you what we did what i did for the channel so this is the the elmar on one side is uh is basically shows a picture of a audio studio and the extra one is a video studio but if you see the big image of it on top it says new media productions and on the bottom it says geek new central on one half and um new media show on the other half so you can't see the full version of this i don't know how you actually uh yeah i don't think we you can actually see the uh yeah i just loaded it but on if you go and look at this on youtube tv you can see the full the full scope of the art but this is just playing around with mid journey having a little fun with it and see what i could come up with so you know it kind of looks like uh leo laporte's studio but it's just you know it's just you know kind of a cool little render thing and it's you know it is what again yeah. it's and and i don't i don't know how to show more links i've actually got gnc and nmc you know both of them link anyway it's just playing around with this thing and um yeah that's cool i think mid journey yeah. is going to be my best 20 bucks i've spent this year it's, it's better than chat gbt and we're not going to go down that road but i've been having a lot of fun with mid journey yeah looks like it and uh, when someone talks about our album art on another show, you know you've done well. And sure. with Apple getting ready to support episode level album art in iOS 17. That's true. Uh, That's coming out what in, in September? Yeah, I don't know when, but you know, when it comes out, the episode level, finally, they're going to support their own tag. Right. So. There's one thing. Have you heard about this new experiment they're doing in podcasting 2.0 called value time split? <laughs> okay. No, I haven't, I guess. All right. So a best, best way to describe it is, and again, it, 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 these guys are like, they're truly, they call it running with scissors. They're truly running with scissors, you know, running down a hallway with the scissors pointed at them actually, and hope they don't trip and impale themselves. Sometimes they do. Um, this value time split basically allows you as let's say we are going to bring on uh, a guest for a little bit and we could actually change our value block for a short period of time to our guest. Uh, the analogy or the actually not the analogy, the test cases they're using is they're playing indie music during the podcast. So they're, you know, they're doing their commentary and they break for a music clip, a two and a half, three minute indie clip. And the, and the money that's earned from the value block goes to the show versus to the host during the time the music is um, is playing, and then it switches back. And then the, the the value block for basically when people are using a modern podcast app when they're streaming sats by the minute, if they're doing a hundred sats per minute for say that the that artist would probably get like three hundred sats for that listen, and then it would go back to the to the artist. They've had some huge success just doing this experiment. So this thing is just, you know, it's, that is way out there, you know, on like fringe utilization. Uh, but I think you could see DJs starting to do things where they're doing music sets and streaming live from a value for value standpoint, audio or, and basically yeah. er, having these artists earn money through a value time split. Um, uh, the use cases in podcasting are starting to expand because, you know, music obviously is very, very challenging because you have to make sure you're not 
violating copyright and that you're actually using indie music and not, you know, someone's cover for that's on, you know, some record right. label. But, right. um, and just some of the stuff that's going on here. Uh, uh, remember blog rolls? Yeah. Well, now you can do a pod roll. And you basically can, within your RSS feed, and it's not implemented with us yet, but others are starting to implement it, you can basically send a link and say, here's 10 shows I recommend that I listen to. And basically do like you did in the old days when we had a blog roll, pod roll. Those would show up in the podcast app said, okay, Todd recommends these seven shows that you should listen to in conjunction with his own show. So we have the ability to drive a recommendation engine personally that's oh. personally curated and not machine curated. I can tell my audience, okay, I think these five will be good for you to listen to. So I, I, there's some cool stuff that's coming. We just need more adoption and you need podcasters just to pay attention to what's going on here. We're, we're the, the, the expansion of features is beyond anything you know, that shouldn't the news shouldn't be YouTube. <laughs> the news should be all this cool new stuff that we're bringing in the marketplace for podcasters for listeners. And right, it's just a matter of getting all the apps to embrace them all. Yeah, and, and that number's growing every day. I think there's seven or seven or eight now, but still, the getting the audience to understand you know what we're doing here is important, not just from the value stuff. Not for V4V, but all the other new features we're bringing that are going to make the experience for a listener much more engaging on, on, on the podcast app they use. Rob, your video went away. Yeah, I, oh, you're showing I pulled us. up a screenshot. Uh, so uh, what is that? It's actually a, a oh. link from, from the Podcast Business Journal um, about active podcast trend line. Yep. So this is a, a, a chart that I'm showing that, that shows... Um, starting May 29th, 2023. So not that long ago, yep. you know, what about a month ago or so. Um, that's the trajectory of the number of podcasts updated in the last 90 days. I could so, probably pull a corresponding chart to show you the increase in listeners that are basically because of this declining number of shows, I can show you an equal chart going the other way of podcasts from the listener side, from the listener side where apps or shows are climbing in listenership. I, and some shows, well, I, as they get, as there's fewer shows, yeah. there's probably more listeners available. The audience right? is not gone anywhere. So the audience right. of these fewer shows, the audiences are migrating to shows that are still active. Uh, so you know, I've seen, I mean, incredible. I've seen, I'm looking at shows. I'm like, Whoa, where did they get an 18% jump? You know? And, and it's just all these, Yeah, I would share that. I would share that number too. Cause that's, that's a confirmation of the concept that maybe this is a terrific time to start a new show. That best, <laughs> best time ever. Right. No, I'm, I'm not kidding. It's, it's a, and it's, if you're an active podcaster, this is not the time to throttle back. This is roll right. up promotion double down on social get out there where these audiences are hanging out it, it's it's time it's you've got you've got the sun is shining and it is bright and high noon for shows that are are new are basically are are con are creating content it's a great time to grow audience you know my personal tech shows i think we're up 15 percent this year it's 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 big i've never seen growth like this in a in a short this short of a period of time yeah because people are, are are still listening it'll be interesting to see what the edison research stuff comes out with share of ear and all that as we go forward to see what has happened but i also think that a lot of listeners are you look at subs on netflix and subs on these other platforms are going down so what they're really seeking out, I, I think they're just, I think, I think the consumption habits of consumers are changing now too. I think there's a dual element here. Right. And if you're providing compelling, good content, wherever it may be, I, I think you're going to do well in, in growth, especially. And I think you're, you're seeing a lot of the, the big competition, right? These larger media companies really pull back. I don't know if you yeah. saw the, well, they, the free money's gone. 
They, 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 they can't, they have to have success. They can't right. have even, a loss. Even a, a, a historically successful, uh, network, uh, New York public radio, um, uh, has, has initiated layoffs and no cut bonuses. And, yeah. yeah. So you're seeing, you know, platform or content platforms that are historically done very well to capture attention in the podcasting space really kind of pull back. Everyone continues to say, oh, advertising is great, but something, there's some, something, there's not, there's someone's fibbing. Well, well, I think that there's, I mean, let's, let's say it from what I'm seeing too, is that there's less trust in content coming out of mainstream media of all types right now. And there's a shift over to, you know, maybe giving the little guy a chance. Maybe it's never rolled down to the little guy, but our programmatic yeah. is doing well. I so think, I think that, you know, podcasting, like you keep saying is one of the last bastions of free speech to some degree. And that, that can either be a good thing or it can be weaponized against us. Uh, I think, the world is kind of like trying to control conversation. You know where it's all right going. It's, go, it's all going to TikTok. Yeah, you know, all the money's going to TikTok. TikTok has got, you know, that's why TikTok, you know, has been under so much scrutiny is because they're taking money away from all these other platforms. Yeah. And I, yeah, would, I thought it was I'd love to see the, the actual dollar amounts is shifting from one medium to the next. Yeah. Did you watch it all in any of the sessions out of VidCon out of Los Angeles? No, I don't Rob. I, I have a day job. I, I work. I don't I have, do, I don't have time. Yeah. But you say you consume a lot of content. No, still. I do. But you know, when I go home from the end of the day, I, I watch sailing shows. I don't watch, uh, you know, I, I don't watch podcast or, you know, industry stuff. I, I need to decompress. I do this for 10 hours a day. I don't need to do it anymore. Right. Or I won't last. I'll be dead in three years. I thought that the discussion at VidCon was very much aligned with the kind of current state of podcasting right now is that they're seeing this uh, change in behavior in consumption and content creators. Uh, it's, it's shifting more towards independent creators so um, are they saying consumption is shifting towards yeah. independent creators yep yeah. and and the whole event was very focused on talking about monetization strategies for individual creators and and at the same time uh, youtube announced a reduction in the right the kind of requirements for being qualified for monetization they dropped the requirement from a thousand subscribers and to 500 subscribers and four thousand to three thousand listening on the listening hours, hours. right so right. why why are they doing that yeah it's so they they can attract more independent creators to their platform well, because people are saying screw you i'm going to because you, you can monetize on tiktok at a thousand well, they're seeing a lot of uptake in independent voices, creating programs on the platform and people shying away and not trusting content coming from the major media companies that have been historically publishing or redistributing their content on YouTube under licensing agreements with, with, with YouTube. People are just not watching that stuff as much. They're watching more niche targeted topic programs. You know, I probably do a. I don't watch any news. Zero. Yeah. Um, right. That's part of what the trend is starting to show is I don't either. I don't watch any mainstream none. news media anymore. I, I might tune in if there's some national event going on. I might load something up, you know, like that, that sub, I, you know, I checked out a little con, you know, whatever, you know, was on the 30 minute repeat. I might check something yeah. like that out Yeah. Um, right. or read an article, you know, maybe go to a major news site and read, but you know, I, I, I do not trust the New York Times. You know, there's a whole bunch of media places I don't, I don't trust. Right. And I, you know, so, and, and if I look at all this stuff with a skeptical eye. So I think it, podcasters are unique in that, and maybe even some YouTubers are unique in that you, you are the voice or face of your show and your credibility is really based upon the data you put forth. and. But 
you know, one person's truth is another person's, you know, that's, that's propaganda. So because of this, you know, this political rift that we have. Yeah. Right. Trust and truth kind of right along together. And that's kind of why I'm doing the show I'm doing now called trust factor. Right. Now I'm starting to roll it into looking at specific instances of, of, um, things that are happening in the world that are either creating trust or distrust. Um, and th- those are, you know, kind of interesting comparisons around um, where those sources are coming from and, and who do we believe, right? I mean, at the end of the day, that, that's what all of us have to decide is what information do we want to believe and, and what other information rides along with it that either confirms or denies that ability to believe it. It's just, you know, it's just like when I go to tech sites, I have to be really careful because there's a lot of agendas on from tech content. Sometimes, do you know if that article has been a paid, pay to play? Um, right. Is it, a, you know, they don't say it is, but you read through it and you're kind of like, eh, this sounds kind of like an advertisement, uh, product well, reviews, you know, there's, right. it's, it's critical thinking. I mean, that's what we're kind of, some people are pushing away from questioning things, right? Yeah. It's, it's just taking what we're being told and that's what you have to believe. And if you speak out against something, then you, then it's weaponized against you. Um, that's not the kind of world I want to live in. Yeah. Well, we have made it here without killing each other. We should, we should have these icons that are like boxing gloves, Todd. Um, well, you know, go over there and sign up for mid journey and play around with it and have fun with it. It doesn't do text. Well, that's the bad thing. It'll just, it'll create an image, but you know, I tried to get it to create some stuff the other day that was, I just wanted a picture of a matrix box, matrix right. theme with the mm-hmm. GNC written in a, inside of the box. It, it couldn't do it. So you basically have to, if you want text on any image it creates, you have to do your own because it doesn't, it gave me a G one time, but it doesn't do text good. So I wonder there, why it's, it's shying away from text. I, I That's don't, very easy to, to I just, generate. I just don't know if, if I'm saying the terms right, maybe I'm, invoking the instructions wrong or is it a font licensing issue yeah who knows who knows what it is but uh, it doesn't do text well so you have to drop uh drop it into some editor and then put your text in so so anyway yeah so it needs to know all of the existing fonts out there and to know that it can't replicate any of those it's got to come up with its own probably and i and i don't know if any fonts are actually in the public domain or not but good good yeah. question well you know ai needs to create some well that's that's potential too so yeah. so anyway did it was this was this a much nicer show today everyone <laughs> yeah we didn't come to blows at all and we didn't scream in the yeah, microphone it wasn't a cage match round number two really didn't uh progress so it, it, it just didn't <laughs> but, pan know, out did it those of you hung out here long enough robin and i've been doing this about 10 years we know each other pretty well so you know, we can agree to disagree and have a good conversation. And I, I can be a little passionate too. So, but that's why we do this. We do this. So you form your own opinion. Right. <laughs> well, somebody has to play a foil against you sometimes, Todd. That just kind of. Oh, that's, uh, that's okay. That's come, okay. Comes with the territory. It makes for a more interesting show. So by the way, are, are you wearing a, a, uh, no, a, I see that shirt you're wearing. I know who, who, you know, how many of those you got in your drawer, 25 or 30? Uh, I've got, a, I've got a few of them. You've yes. see, seen you have a Tesla. You don't change oil very often. If you want to, I need some good oil change t-shirts. So I'll be happy to, to get uh, two or three of those or wear it backwards and make sure no one can see the advertising and get a bunch of oil on it and then throw it in a trash can. Right. So. There you go. <laughs> Got a couple from a few other companies. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you people do imagine. that with ours as well. But I'm just joking here. But uh, I don't actually have any blueberry shirts. You should, you should send me one. No, you come to podcast movement. I mean, we probably will have some there. I'm not. I'm not currently set to come to podcast movement right now. So, huh? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, well, you know. Interesting. We'll see. We'll see. Huh. Hmm. Uh, wait, well, wait. Uh, as far as I know, we're not doing this show live at Podcast Movement this year. Yeah, so. we're we're too we're too outspoken. Uh, who knows? <laughs> are we? 
well, <laughs> I try not to be too outspoken, but you know, on certain topics, but other ones I do shy away from. Well, our YouTube numbers are dropping. People know we're going to quit. Todd at Blue- who cares, right? Todd at Blueberry.com. Todd at Blueberry.com at Geek News on Twitter. Uh, I'm on Twitter as well at, at Rob Greenlee. I'm on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, you know, go through the normal list. And you can send me an email too if you want, rob.greenlee at gmail.com. I'm happy to hear from you. I'd love to hear any tips that you might have about things that are going on in the industry. I'm always trying to keep up with that. And, um, and, Hopefully I'll make it to podcast movement. So we'll see. Newmediashow.com. Follow or subscribe to the podcast. You'll see that links on the website. By the way, Rob, don't forget, you have to hit end stream on YouTube. So you have to load that tab up and remember to hit end stream so that when we're done, because otherwise they'll sit there and try to figure out what's going on. That's the difference when you run a manual start stop on YouTube versus when you're just authenticated with StreamYard and it just stops automatically. So just know mm-hmm. you have to go back to that tab and hit end stream when you're finished. All right, everyone. Thanks for being here. Uh, we will be back on July 5th. Uh, I hope everyone has a, for those of you in the United States, have a, a great 4th of July. Uh, yeah, Paul Rismandel is going to join us from Signal Yep. Um, to talk about the, the recent research they put out talking about the top uh, ranked podcast uh, consumption apps and platforms. Uh, we gave the blueberry team Monday off. So uh, they're getting a good long extended uh, four day weekend. So uh, uh, as I tell people uh, be safe because <laughs> this weekend, there'll be some amateurs out there and uh, be careful when you're driving because people will be partying up because of the 4th of July and uh, don't blow your barbecue drill- grills up. And for those of you outside the United States, have a great Monday, Tuesday at work. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for being here. Thanks for uh, listening. We'll see you next week on the new media show. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye.